Hi, I'm Matthew Sievers, here at Blue Ring Gallery, standing in front of my newest body of work, Abstracting Light. I'm really excited about this collection, some of the things I'm pushing, and some of the rules I am adhering to so I can break a few others and really get some interest in my, um, my work. The new show for Abstracting Light is this Friday, May 29th, at Blue Ring Gallery, and hopefully you guys can make it. This piece, Silhouette at Sunset, is a great example of how I'm layering my paint and letting it dry and then coming back with another transparent mark. Um, usually a really bold swatch of paint that your eye can um, see how it has been scraped in one long consistent mark and set off the details so that when I come in with fine brushwork or palette knife, the two play off each other. And I'll use a lot of different tools, even like a roller, where as I thin the paint, I'm getting a um, great contrast against the opaque and the thick and the, the bold color in the pigments for where I might have brushwork or a different effect. The abstracting light quality is really strong in this piece, especially where the sky has this kind of vanishing point and your focal point of the barn is more this deep, um, dark areas that your eye can travel into, just the same way it's traveling through these layers of paint. And this lens flare, how it follows your eye as well, there's different lines bringing you into this area but the light is fractured and used more as a design element, um, connecting the dots and, and pulling you into the painting despite there being this wall, something that would normally be a stop. And I love that about this piece. All of my work has a really strong design element, which includes a story. The barn piece was more a portrait of a barn where it's painted like you might the portrait of a president. This is important, this is a character, it's a moment in time. This piece, I really love how the world is getting late in the evening and the cold's coming in, the dark's coming in, but this lone figure, he's out there on his own and he's so in his element. He's in this stance that is very comfortable, he's prepared and this, campfire even has such a warm inviting glow this uh, focal point by design is very inviting and um, very at ease despite the world uh, throwing everything it has at him and um, that that mindset especially with our current dilemma I find so intriguing as, especially where he is so in his element. The technique for it is kind of an old master's technique. It's where the dark paint is painted first and thin, and then you work from the thin paint up to the thick, which is called the fat doll. They'll usually call it lean to fat. But even though it's an old master's technique, I'm doing it in a really modern approach where you might get a feeling almost like a spray paint um, painting, even though it's in oils, where there's drips and, and areas that are very um, contemporary and abstract. For example, all these trees were painted in the darkest dark. This is a roller mark and some really um, big application marks before I came back with beautiful little brushwork to design the silhouette at the tops of those trees. And that's how the whole piece is created throughout the um, slow build to the sagebrush, for the snow, for the warm in the trees versus the, the silhouette of the tree created by fog. So this is similar to the barn where I wanted to paint a tree that has a real voice and character. And it's not a tree that has been pruned back. It's not conforming to the world. It's not trying to be beautiful. It's trying to be itself. It's just, this is me. Take it or leave it. 
I love that message. And then even though it's this serene setting, you've seen a tree, you've seen a sunset, it's been painted a lot. I'm wanting to take those elements and really push them as far as I can. So where this light follows and starts to reflect on the grass, some of this is done with one big bold scrape where other areas are really thought out. And then using abstract elements where a um, lens flare could occur or perhaps a dust on a, uh, a camera or light going into your eye, whatever it may be, it engages your imagination for the different ways these things could be created in the painting. Um, this is also a really great example of all the different tools you can use to paint so that your eye doesn't get bored. I love brushwork. Brushwork is always going to be the king of painting because it's so controlled and you can have a hard brush or a soft brush, big, small, very controlled. But to pick up a tool that's very difficult to use, more so than a palette knife even, like say you picked up a coconut husk to see what that does with the paint and to get some effects like these um, scrapes that I can build upon and as your eye travels into the painting it's picking out elements that's like oh man how was that done that's that's unique I haven't seen that before I love having those hidden inside the artwork especially in this one it's it's something that a um, professor of mine went over that Every stage of the painting should be seen in the end result. If you sketch it in graphite, then let the eye find that pencil sketch in the painting. And the underpainting where this was sketched in, I love how it comes through the paint. This was kind of a royal blue that has a transparent yellow over top that gives it this um, kind of earthy sky gray. Those are the elements that I feel make this piece really strong.